Okay, mini series in the answer to chess revisited. So that's the whole focal point regarding me actually doing the site in the first place, um, doing the streaming, doing the videos. It's about the answer to chess. So in this game here, we covered in the previous um, practice session. This is a correspondence game, a seven day game. And we got to this stage here where we said, well, okay, if the rook does come back, then we can push this pawn here onto the king. The king can't take the pawn, the rook can't take the pawn. So the king has to move. So they're basically losing their rook as far as I can see. So that's why we're going with this particular move here. This one here we said is a draw. If played correctly, it looks like a draw to me. Um, but if they're looking to be fancy, they've not offered a draw at the minute. So it looks like they're looking to think they're going to win. Maybe because their king is more highly advanced up the board. So if we press on to him, then he's making his way over to our pawns. Um, but it's kind of easily dealt with by just pushing this pawn here. It can't go further down. But I suppose it can make its way down, but it really can't challenge the pawn. So I could end up just going backwards and forwards like this. So I'm actually just going to push the pawn here. With thinking it's a draw, the opponent has to make a duff move. <clears throat> I think probably maybe a duff move is going back, but I think they'll just come across. So at this point here, we could come across, like we said, or just push the pawn up, preventing it from actually getting to this stage. So that's what we're doing with this one. Um, there is one game where I don't think I'm going to get anything, but we'll see. Um, so where we've got to yes yeah, so this was the one where they were going for the checkmate position so we took the knight off the board <clears throat> they took our knight our bishop can take the bishop and um, pawn here and just making sure that that makes sense it does because the rook is on so I think we'll go with this uh, we're very mindful that the queen does have access down here it can sit here and we, what we don't want is like to have like the pawn being here and then the queen sitting here type thing. So that's potentially what they'll look to do. So we captured the pawn, then the queen comes to sit here. If the queen comes to sit there though, then the queen takes the pawn. If the queen comes across, he's still not got a check on us. So we can start making our queen come here to defend that area. Okay, so we'll capture the pawn with the bishop and see how that lands. So now currently with this one we have done the exchange and mar to actually be a rook. A rook up, not a rook up, but like um, we've won the exchange in a sense. So it's like a knight and a rook versus two rooks. So what is the plan of action? really want to get this knight into the game but if I went here that would cause me some serious trouble because he would have a fork so we want to not try and do things like that maybe potentially coming here attacking the knight where does he actually want to go he can still come and put that check on my king so that's a bit annoying you see so if I go into the corner then I'm out of the way of any checks but is that being proactive? I can put a check on his king here, but then his king can come into the action here. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. It's an interesting one. Tack. He doesn't have to put the check on, but if he does, we move. And if we're planning to attack him again, he can hide around the corner don't really want to chase him so much but um, if we go here obviously his rook is wanting to get some sort of back ranker or something he may change his mind and come for the pawn here which would uh, if he does then obviously we'll just take the knight off the board does he have any forks no nope, no nope. I think we're going to go with that. I'm not going to harass his king just yet because his knight is in a troublesome position for us. So let's let him show his hand on that one. Okay, so this one we 
came through with the queen x-ray and now it's just chasing our queen down really trying to get us all trapped up we do have a minor piece up but he's looking to cause trouble for us we could bring our queen here out of the way of any trouble it's defending the king or we could make it proactive because the bishop hasn't moved yet it's just that the bishop can move anyway you see let's have a look at the last moves that happened right okay so rook captured we've moved to this side because we were then looking to trade the rook off on this but he's moved his rook so we need to move the queen to a more active square is the white square going to be okay gives a bit of space for movement doesn't it yeah and is his queen coming down looking to grab the knight in which case we can start moving I suppose right yeah okay that seems doable to me let's just bring that link across and that looks like all the correspondence games for the answer process so now we're going to go into an actual game and it's going to be a 10 minute game and looking at the answer process within that 10 minute game Okay, so here is the answer process in full effect. Whether we win or not, <laughs> it makes no odds. We're practicing the answer process, the concepts behind it, which is attacking key spaces, key areas, key pieces, focusing on the king and the king area and the pieces around the king area. So attacking with the pawn if we do capture his pawn just drops down onto our knight so our knight has to do a merry dance so we could capture the pawn here and then obviously there's maneuvers on that side so I'm just going to actually capture a piece so the queen is quickly moved there so they're going to get the pawn back anyway so we're not precious about that we could defend the knight but the knight's not going to stay there for too long because he's going to push his pawn here onto the onto the knight So we'll push up, developing a pawn, developing our bishops on the diagonals. So the pawn does push down like we said. So we can quite safely bring it down here. He takes with the pawn and his pawn is on our knight. So we could do that or we could bring it this way and either way he's still going to be on our knight. But we could bring our queen across. If the pawn takes the knight, we take his queen, bishop takes. Does that look a pretty sight? Not at this moment in time. So what are the other continuations that can be done? Queen could come here with a check on the king. Doesn't mean it's a good check, but the pawn simply drops down. If the pawn drops down, our knight can take the pawn with a check on his rook. Only issue we have is that his queen can take the pawn with a check on our king so we'd have to potentially bring our bishop up to protect and then his queen can actually come and take a pawn here but it feels like a nice position so i'm actually going to go for it even though he's probably going to be a pawn up or something he might go for there but then our knight would take and I don't think that a person this level would do that. Yep, so we're going to grab attacking, but like we said, it can put the check on. Now let's have a look at the picture. Because if our knight takes, we do have a check on his king with our queen. <coughs> Excuse me. So he has to move. So I'm going to take. Oh, we can't because he's got a check on us. Oh, <laughs> all fancy. Could bring the queen back, but the queen would take our knight uh, he's still going to get that pawn if we bring the bishop here we did say we're going to bring this white square bishop out but his queen is still going to get the pawn which is going to be more active for us we could put a check on but we can't because we've got a check on us i'm going to develop the bishop as scrappy as it looks we're following the mantra following the answer process putting pressure 
on the king area ah so he's actually going for the exchange he's taken the knight off so he's got one two three four four minor pieces we've only got three we don't have to take his queen we could come here and take the pawn so maybe looking for two pawns for a, a for a knight or something like that so it's all quite mysterious but probably going to take the queen even though we're going to be a minor piece down hmm how do we want to work this shall we exchange the queen or shall we not in the mantra it says exchange the queens if it's of benefit to yourself it's not really benefit to ourselves he can take our pawn here and then he'll get these pawns on this side so it could get quite sketchy I'm actually going to take the pawn here and not exchange because it's not really to my benefit I've lost a minor piece I'm going to be losing pawns uh, from his queen so I need to establish a good attack towards his king area as best possible if he does take this pawn then we've got the stealth queen which is going to take the queen here so I think they're probably going to plump for this pawn here but if they're doing all this work with their queen then realistically we can develop our pieces so I'm not being frightful of that at this moment in time we're following the answer because we're pressuring the king area we're trying to do things that are preventing the opponent from actually getting castled or getting their king to safety so being a minor piece down doesn't worry us because we're trying to find that better all killing position so now the opponent's taking their time like we took our time and it's looking okay yes you're a minor piece down we could be a pawn down two pawns down we have got to try and find that killer position it's attacking our queen okay so we can touch on on the king again he drops down so then we just bring our queen back a little bit we could attack his queen but he's going to allow that because he's already um, pieces up anyway I think I'm just going to hold this pawn to ransom here so it's going to be a nice nice steady he's going to be looking for the cheapy as well but he may just come for the pawn straight off with the queen but the further down the board it goes with the queen the better it is for us positionally so this is an interesting start to this particular game for the answer down a minor piece like we've mentioned in the training games um, we practice in the training games you know losing pieces and then how can you come back from that and the majority of the games where we have come back it's because we've found those better positions because it really doesn't matter how many pieces you've got on the board if they're not in the right place you may as well have no pieces on the board that's the psychology that we're working on especially in this game for the answer revisited so the opponents in a deep think they want to get their king to safety you can tell so they, they probably will do but they're having to jostle a few more pieces we're not even fully developed yet but because they've won that minor piece they, they're thinking they should be winning ok let's have a go now so we could castle if we castle it can come straight with the move because he's already got his queen there so then he would bring the rook <coughs> excuse me so we want to be developing our pieces without a shadow of a doubt so let's bring the bishop here it's not really looking to take the knight off the board so he doesn't need to panic <coughs> but he will panic he'll move the knight I'm trying to manipulate as many squares as possible with my pieces he's going for the exchange again so he's not bothered about his king getting castled so we could go here like this it's just a shame that his um, queen is his king is not behind if we did that what we, what's he going to do he's going to do that with his bishop if we push then it captures so it's not going to really work 
doesn't like us holding his pawn to ransom, but we aren't, we're not going to exchange. So if we went here, his rook is just going to go here. So let's just move the queen out of the way. They're chomping at the bit to get the queen off. They probably will do. But at the expense of not developing their pieces, which is a good sign for me. They're focused on, you know, they're moving this queen a few times and they're not developing the pieces or working them together. We've got our bishop out, we've got our bishop out. Already controlling some nice key areas, key spaces for us to try and operate with as best possible. So that's the difference. I mean, we can take the knight, but I'm looking to... If I'm looking to castle, I need to get to safety, don't I? At this moment in time, there's nothing that's really troubling. So I could just get my knight out as well. And then I have potential... Op Ooh, but... He's going for a cheap little pawn pawn here. He's going for a little pawn. So shall we just uh, give this a little bit of a lift? Let's give it a little bit of a lift. If the knight moves, then obviously we need to start scarpering and castling. Because the bishop will come down. So I'm just trying to see what it is they're attempting to do. They're closing off the area quite nicely around the king. They've got all the pieces around the king now. The king is in the centre of the board like ours is. I'm a bit mindful about actually castling though, because it's got straight down attack going on here. Makes it a little bit easy for them, doesn't it? Yeah, he's developed the knight, so we're going to have to castle, unless, of course, we do this. So the dancing knight is now targeting this pawn, which has no protection on. Um, if we castle, he's just going to go. So we may as well just push the pawn, and that's doing a preventative thing of stopping the bishop coming here. So he's going to be, I think he's going to be working his way around here that type of thing something like that with his king queen now these pawns are disheveled i don't think i'm queen side castling so i might have to just risk it for a biscuit on the king side yeah so the more pieces you've got the harder it is for you to get some activity going get some trading bishop's probably coming to look to trade off the bishop <coughs> So he's going to want to trade down. Like I said, he's just targeting here. There's not, if we, if we castle, yeah, then his queen just jumping straight in here. We do have the queen protecting, but I don't think that's going to be any good. Maybe he's going to get his rook in front first, then here. Also, he's got this knight as well. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because if we castled, then his knight can jump here and then it's just right in front of our queen's face. Our queen has to move from that spot. Can't go there because his bishop's there. Yeah, that's a massive attack. Mind you, he could still go there and get the pawn. If he's just hunting the pawn, his knight can just jump there and I can't defend the pawn. So I'm going to have to do this as a preventative measure and see if I can get this knight across here I don't think there's any castling going on anywhere is there from both of us we're on 3 minutes and 16 they're on 4 minutes and 31 so I might be looking to put some super thinking mode in now all looks a bit scrappy but bear in mind, the opponent is the one with a minor piece up. And because they did so many queen moves, they're now bringing their pieces into the game, slowly but surely. But they're doing appropriate targeting. Targeting the weak areas. If I go rushing castling, they're going to take advantage of it. It's got a bishop that can stay here now, blocking off this area. There's things we can do as well. But it's showing the simple fact that just because somebody does have an extra minor piece doesn't mean that they're actually winning because this opponent is still taking their time. Um, we could attack his queen. And oh, he's got my rook. 
<laughs> he's got my rook, but we could attack his queen. I suppose his bishop still takes the rook we take, and then his king takes. Oh, I can't block that. I can't block that. Well, I could get his his knight. If I go here, or not here. I'll get his knight for the rook. It's a piece for a piece. That might work. It's only a rook. Got to have that mindset. You know, people live on the fact that, oh, if I lose a rook, I've lost the game. That's not the case. It's position on the board. That is the key thing. He does capture. We capture. Does it improve your position on the board? Does that bishop attack actually improve their position on the board? You have to ask yourself genuinely, does it? Because it's like a single attack. To me, it doesn't look like it's improved their position on the board. It looks nice because it's doing something, but when we're playing a proper game of chess, you really have to get rid of, oh, it looks nice. It's got to be practical. See that there? Obviously, the rook is going to come in front, but that's a nice positional play if I can get it off. So we're both on 2 minutes and 37. I don't think he's going to miss that one, but he's potentially thinking, well, I need to get my bishop back out again. So if he does do that, then we do do this, so we potentially would get his rook off the board. Now you see, he's seen it. That's a bit of a, a bit of a miffer, isn't it? So we could bring the bishop here with a check on... Oh, we can't because he's got a check through. Wow! Isn't that just amazing? So we could move the king up if we wanted to. In fact, we're going to have to actually because his bishop's just going to come here. And we won't be able to take. So I'm going to have to move my king off of the line of attack. Oh, the one piece that could have actually sealed it for us. He's still got his queen in front of his king, so if we can manage some sort of rook thing. <laughs> you have to think, you have to think that you can. So the two moves away. But he's going to be pressuring my queen because he's going to be coming here with his bishop. So what do we do then? We can come here with a check on his king, but then he's going to look straight for the queen exchange, maybe. Yeah, I think I might be trapping my queen if I do that. So he's bringing his knight into the game. So does that... I'm just moving this, just for the potential for this. Maybe. Maybe. I don't want to overthink that one because I thought something else was going to happen. I think this is still coming. And I don't really know where I'm moving my queen. Oh, he's, he's seeing everything, isn't he? Look at him. My gosh. Dark square bishop. Can't get in. Can't get there. They're seeing everything. What else can I do? Um, I was going to do that and I'm still going to do it. It was scary enough for them to actually move their king off of the line. How did they see that? Yeah, and that was coming. We knew that was coming. It's taken it off the line, maybe because of the fact of this, maybe. Maybe he didn't take it off because of the rook, but because of the queen coming here. Right, so we're not going that side now. So let's get rid of that. One minute to go. Put a check on here, drops his pawn. And we don't really have any spaces left, do we? could can't come back here can't come there he's going to just take our queen off and we can come all the way back here okay let's put the check on pawn drops is there anything else when it does drop come on give me something no there isn't dark square bishop is on a dark square it's not going to get away with that one minute and four they are on as well so they're taking the time but they look like they're just going to crunch me now 58 seconds. Uh, the knight's down. What's the knight coming down for? So can we not go here? Ooh, let's go here. 
We've got a discovered check with our rook as well, so just in case his bishop wants to get fancy, we can throw that out. But the white square bishop ain't attacking anything, is it? No. I'm surprised the knight came down. Okay, 35 seconds they're on. The pressure is on. White square bishop can actually go here. Ooh. Uh, no, I can't. His rook's there. If we go like this, attack his bishop, the rook is on his queen. So it's like a 2 on 1. No, no, no. What happened? What happened? No, no, no. What, what happened just then? Is my queen under threat? No? Okay. It looks like we're putting some pressure on them. Oh, he's defended. Is it working? It's working. What's the queen doing? Is he getting my queen for free? 17 seconds. It's actually working. Has he landed on something? I could have taken his queen. No, no. He's staying on that file. Um, let's take eight seconds left. <gasps> You're joking me. Oh, he's blocked away. He's blocked away. Check me. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. That was a that was a really good example of the answer process. You saw it live here. Um, we wanted to revisit the the answer process just to show that's why we're actually doing um, these videos we're not just doing it just for the fun of it we're doing it to see if we can improve our games and in this particular game here this was a prime one and um, to really highlight that just because you've won a minor piece and you know you've got more pieces on the board doesn't mean you've actually won the game so we'll have a look at the evaluation here it's going to be a bit mean on us but never mind Okay, so let's go. So we push through, attacked the pawn. So it's saying that that's okay. Yeah, it's not showing that it's a bad move, you know, capturing the pawn. So we push through. Obviously, we will have made some mistake somewhere because we lost the knight. Doesn't like that queen move. I was quite pleased with it, really. Um, so what's it saying? Bringing the knight back? Hmm gets chased around though, you bring it back, you've done all that forward motion. Yeah, queen takes, yeah, they're saying the bishop coming across here. No, I'm still happy with what we did, even though the um, bar dipped like anything. Yeah, so it's showing black is out and out winning. So we captured, we're looking at improving our position on the board. It's for the opponent to see these brilliant moves. If you know, when you're doing your evaluations afterwards and you're going, wow, that's a bit hefty. Right from the very beginning of the answer process that we showed, um, we were never really in any major favor. But it's the way that you play. And if the opponent plays like a computer, then you know, they're gonna win. So we captured. Brought the queen down. We expected them to take the pawn with their queen, but now it looks like a bit drawish. And then it's gone weak again with me developing my bishop. But I didn't have a problem developing my bishop. They brought the queen back, so it's another queen move, which, you know, it's a lot of work. Uh, it's saying the bishop attack there. Yeah, but still, he's still got his own bishop. Oh! Do you know what? No, he could have blocked with his knight, though, so there's no point. Yeah. Okay, so we brought the queen across, dancing with our queen just to protect it basically. Pushed through. Yeah, it's not in our favour at all. It's all because we're a minor piece down, but we're looking at improving our position on the board. There's a massive difference between material gain, which is what the computer evaluation is assessing. It's saying you've got all the you've got an extra minor piece, so you should be winning. Doesn't matter where your pieces are. You know, <laughs> you've got more pieces on the board. And that's something I've trained myself out of, especially when it's happened to me when I've played over the board games, played online, where I've had extra pieces, and then suddenly it all goes to pop. And I wanted to know why that happened. And it's because people use the answer. 
you know attacking the king area attacking key spaces key pieces and keeping a focal point and pressuring the king area a little bit at a time and making sure that you're looking at your back end your blind spots as best possible with the pieces that you've got trying to work them together Whew. that's a mouthful okay so still attacking gauge bars well on their side as you can see and then they've gone for another piece they've grabbed the rook but we turned it on its head and we says well okay we can take unite we're not we ain't, i've got a problem with that because what is the bishop doing um in our eyes the bishop isn't really serving a full purpose we did expect it to come and attack the queen what we would have done from there we didn't know we could move it to some safe area somewhere so again the gauge bar is going up and up and up oh you know i didn't even take advantage of that did i when the king moved i didn't take advantage of that look at that rook taking the, the bishop because i've i felt there was something better yeah putting pressure onto his queen felt a lot better so they brought the bishop through put pressure onto his king but then i didn't I, yeah this poor move really should have that would have sealed it for them i think in a sense you know more control over the board i don't know why um they did this knight move at all it's really still baffling me now so push down then we said we were going to have to come across somewhere you know gauge bar still showing okay but we would have been dancing around trying to find better positions either way because that's what we're like but the knight move to me really killed it off for them but did we do the best moves from there we attacked the knight because obviously he's got an x-ray through onto his king and um, again didn't take advantage of that because we saw we wanted to get rid of the big fish you know this could take it you know that can take its time we don't need to rush that we're looking at getting the big fish well, he looks like he's done some sort of report analysis on there. I'm, I'm going to check that in a minute when we're finished here. Okay, so then we attack the bishop because we're looking for the rook to come through here if the bishop does take. Um, but they took with the knight. It's got a question mark on there itself. So we captured back because we still got that pressure through from the rook onto his um, king. So I think this is where they really got into a flap in trying to protect the bishop somehow. So we pushed on to the bishop, so then they had to release it. And I think pressure of time was kicking in at this moment in time. But again, showing the point of us practicing those blitz move, you know, blitz games, the faster games, to feel more comfortable under pressure of time. And it seemed to work quite nicely for us in this because we were still be able to do narrative as well. So that's improving our narrative skills while we're playing these faster games time was against us at this stage so they brought the bishop through and at this point here this bishop is blocking the queen the queen is defending this square so then all we have to do is this okay so we've got like a report analysis thing what, what are we on four inaccuracies three mistakes is that five i can't see it no. Yeah, that looks good. Excellent, yeah. So, yeah, the answer process to the purists out there, um, I would say don't look at this like I've mentioned in the about section. Um, this is not pure, purist chest. It's not like, oh, it's going to be perfect. This is how to, how to win against the oddity. How to be the underdog. How to come out of um, bad scrapes also then if you have advantages trying to keep those advantages as best possible utilizing the concepts that we've mentioned for the answer attacking the key spaces the key pieces um, pressuring the king area and keeping that pressure on the king if you can and getting any checkmates or taking off key pieces um, again that's really key and really and truly the smaller pieces attacking the higher pieces is key but really, it's about your teamwork. Getting your pieces working together really does help. 
that's all I can say about the answer process really um, I'm really pleased that we've got to this stage here where we've done quite a few videos and lots of training training concepts and ideas if anybody is finding them any use then I'm really happy and pleased um, you don't need to put any comments anyway it's just a matter of um, it, this type of stuff being available I was searching for chess stuff for ages when I was learning how to play the game uh, to help with my over the board games and my online games as well and I thought well there's something missing for myself for me personally and it was like how I can develop my answer process without being all clinical and too um, what's the word knowledgeable about all these fancy openings and stuff and all that type of stuff I wanted to have a good grounding as to well having looked at grandmaster games international master games national national master games and all sorts of games um when i've looked at their games i've gone well okay realistically you're not actually using the opening concepts um you're kind of winging it like everybody else so i wanted to know what this winging it winging it thing was and the winging it thing was the answer concept it's not something i've created it's basically from watching all these players play and basically at the end of the day they're looking to put pressure on the king or the king area or condensing down key p key spaces key pieces and definitely taking out higher pieces with lesser pieces trapping pieces smothering um, players and really at the end of the day checkmates come in there eventually sometimes majority of them it's more a case of the person capitulates because they've suffered so much damage and that is the answer process simple as that i hope you've enjoyed the series i've enjoyed creating the videos chest gym out